It's here everyone, the finale to not just season 3 of The Bad Batch, but of the entire show. And man did it deliver with a near hour long episode. Bad Batch Season 3, Episode 15, titled The Cavalry Has Arrived, sees everyone face off against the Empire as they work to escape Tantus. This is Star Wars Music Analysis. And even before the title card, eerie drones have entered, signaling that anything could go wrong. We also got this theme that I was not familiar with at the beginning, which I thought was a little strange, but certainly unsettling. A pulse in the synth then leads us in before the strings pick up more lively music. Wrecker finally seems to have been hurt by something after battling the beast in the last episode as the batch continue on foot towards the base. Ow! Did you think wrestling that creature was a good idea? At the time, yes. As we move inside the base, a military march with snare drum takes over, but mixed into it still is Hemlock's theme as we see the doctor. Dr. Hemlock. One of the insurgents has been captured. His confrontation with Rampart is shrouded in silence as the two empty men trade jabs. Not a good look, Rampart. Next, we jump to Emery and Echo. Emery has decided to help the clones after all. A brief variation of the clone theme enters as they speak. Because I was wrong about this place. And I'm trying to do the right thing. Then it's to the vault, as this episode quickly shows us where everyone is at before chaos ensues. The vault music returns as the young captives plot their escape. But it sounds dangerous. My squad I told you about? They're here. Soft but energetic music continues as they reconfigure the droid. As it takes out the doctor, the Bad Batch begins to enter before breaking into variations on the beginning phrase and becoming an ostinato. Over top, Omega's theme heroically enters in the horns. It builds suspensefully to a climax before giving way to the next scene. Another moment of silence accompanies the batch in the jungle as Wrecker is not doing well after all. This is when I really started to worry about the big guy. Filoni is preparing us to lose Wrecker, and maybe everyone else now as well. He's gonna need another med patch. Low energetic music returns as the children sneak through the base. As Baron begins to scream, the music changes to foreshadow the danger that it brings. It stays soft then until the Zillow Beast wakes. As it does, the music begins to come to life with the monster. The brass entered to bring volume to the threat. As Emery enters the vault, Hemlock has beaten her there as the children's escape has already become known. And I thought Hemlock would notice Echo in this moment. Good thing he's distracted by small children and a giant monster. Echo figures out what Omega did though, and as he does, the Bad Batch theme enters, demonstrating how the team is already working together. She released the Zillow. How do you know that? Because it's exactly what I'd do. As we move back to the Zillow Beast, the music picks up, except of course for when we see that Baron has fallen asleep to the comforts of death and destruction. This puts him to sleep. <sighs> that, ladies and gentlemen, is definitely a future Sith Lord. The brass continue to be the only appropriate instrument to accompany the large beast. But back in the jungle, the silence continues, and the team is not doing well. Wrecker is wrecked, and Crosshair Shakes have returned with a vengeance. Uh, 
Crosshair realizes that this isn't going to work and changes the plans. As he does, a version of his theme enters. It's taken up by a solo violin, giving it its most tender variation yet, as this group is as fragile as it's ever been. As Crosshair drops the tech bomb, Plan 99 music enters, tearing at our hearts along the way. Clone Force 99 died with tech. We're not that squad anymore. As Crosshair continues to nominate himself as tribute, his theme returns again. Finally, as Hunter realizes that he's the leader and starts acting like it, the Bad Batch theme enters in a solo horn. Filoni and the Kiners definitely wanted to make this a pivotal moment in the episode. The heroes have reflected on their loss and struggles and have doubled down on their final sacrifice. That's what actually makes them heroes, not their strength, their willingness to give selflessly for others. I'll infiltrate the base myself. Not happening. Yeah, we've handled worse situations than this. Can't Wait, I died with tech. We're not that squad anymore. I've been inside that mountain. I'm doing this alone. It's... It's what I deserve. Don't even think... We've always known the risks. And so did tech. We do this together. The Zillow Beast and the Brass break the moment though as it breaks through the hangar. A brief insertion of the Bad Batch enters as the Batch joke about which of their team would have done this. It enters once more to transition us back to Omega and the children. But we quickly move back to silence as they witness the destruction. As Omega's caring and kindness come through, so does her theme. It's enough to encourage the children to continue their journey and face their fears. As they begin up the ladder, just the music moves up with here, them. Not what's below. As the troopers go after the Zillow Beast, the music picks up for the pursuit. Meanwhile, Hemlock prepares for the inevitable. He awakens soldiers that are shrouded in red mist. That's how you know they're powerful. Red mist, guys. Red mist. As the Bad Batch make it to the broken hangar, the Bad Batch ostinato enters, but CX-2 is waiting for them, and so are the Evil Batch. i just call them bad, but that would be confusing, so it's the Bad Batch versus the Evil Batch. The CX synth attacks enter for the standoff. We can take them. No, we can't. Not in your condition. Crosshair's theme enters next in desperation, and hey look, I think he actually hit what he was aiming for. Yeah, Crosshair has his aim back. But as the bay doors close and trap them inside, the Plan 99 music enters again, signaling this group's end. A shot from a ship further adds devastation as now even Hunter, the only remaining healthy clone, is hit. And this was intense. As Crosshair tries to help Wrecker, he's held down, and CX-2 cuts off his shooting hand. This really got dark really fast. This is the harshest thing that could have happened. Right after the sniper gets back his aim, his hand is taken. The children continue in silence until they're discovered. As they are, music enters as well, but Echo quickly puts an end to it. Omega's team enters to accompany the reunion. And other kids? The shuttles in Bay 4 are still operational. You're helping us, The music Dr. picks up then as the group hurries out of the area. A hidden Bad Batch theme enters as Omega looks for the Bad Batch, and as she sends the children off with Emery, a triumphant fanfare enters. And this had me worried. Now that all of the innocent children had escaped, maybe everyone else here really is doomed. Maybe this was the triumphant ending, and if you didn't want your heart broken, stop now. The music picks up as Echo and Omega move through the base. 
freeing the clone prisoners. As they do, we hear the clone theme enter for the disparate clones. It enters again as Echo states that clones don't leave their brothers behind. Clones don't leave our brothers behind. Listen. I know you've all been it builds to a climax as the clones agree to help Echo and Omega, as Nala say knowingly volunteers what will be a sacrifice in order to eradicate Data in the base, touching strings swell to carry her away. But a low attack as we see Rampart signals that he has other plans. As the clones break into the training room to free the Bad Batch, they are massacred by the operative clones. Low energetic music plays underneath as Omega works frantically above to free the group. But she's caught, and as Hemlock enters, his theme enters in the horns. He gasses the unmasked clones. Brass enter as Rampart shoots Nalase, but in her last moment, she takes care of him and all of the data. <laughs> Meanwhile, Echo is ganged up on by the operatives as shrieks in the strings accompany and add to the drama. The music momentarily subsides. But as the Bad Batch come back to life, so does the music. Flurries in the strings accompany Wrecker's wrecking. The flurries move to the woodwinds next, adding chaos to the music. As Wrecker goes on a rampage, the operative clones begin to fall. The music settles down briefly as Hunter takes out CX-2, and I think that puts to rest the CX-2 as tech debate once and for all. An augmented version of the Bad Batch theme enters then as they begin to get a hold of the situation and work together as a group again. But it picks up again as their job is not yet done. As Hemlock flees with Omega, his theme plays, but Hunter and Crosshair have other plans. The standoff that follows allows the music to continue softly but frantically. In this moment, Crosshair must make the most important shot of his life, and he must do it with one hand. It all comes down to trust and belief. The music builds in anticipation until... The shots themselves reverberate through the silence as the music cuts off, leaving it feeling completely raw and real. Hemlock falls into the darkness and the silence, like any good Star Wars villain, ending his reign of terror. But as Omega rejoins her brothers, her theme enters in the music once more triumphantly. And with that, the Bad Batch, still all together and alive, leave Tantus heroically. And not a moment too soon, as Tarkin arrives only a second later in his new Star Destroyer. Surprisingly, it seems none of Project Necromancer survived, which confuses me now to everything that happens in the sequels, and continues to leave that mystery untold to some degree. No, Governor. Data banks were destroyed. The Imperial theme plays in the background, though, hinting that perhaps all was not lost after all. this facility indefinitely and redistribute all funding to Project Stardust. Back on Pabu, the clones and children have begun a new life during the epilogue, but this seems wrong. I mean, the Empire knows about Pabu now, so how can this still be a safe place? You'd think it would be the first place that they would check, or very likely maintain control over indefinitely since they were harboring fugitives here before. As Hunter and Omega reflect, a variation of the Bad Batch theme enters calmly and warmly. As Echo departs, the clone theme calls through in the trumpet to carry him away. Omega's theme picks up from there in the piccolo, even higher than the flute and lighter because of it. They're free to follow their own paths. Now, we get to choose who we want to be. Like what? As the group sits together, the Bad Batch theme enters, but it's calmer now and in major, reflecting where this group has found themselves finally.
One final scene, beginning in silence, sees a now much older Omega still on Pabu and still being watched over by Hunter. Soft music enters as she decides to leave for the rebellion. The synths bring back the Bad Batch theme. It shifts to Omega's theme next before then Hunter, carrying a brief moment of Crosshair's theme. You've all fought enough. This? I'm ready. Yeah, I know you are. Keep an eye on Rekha and Crosshair while I'm gone. Betcha too. Off you go. Plan 99 music softly enters as we see that she still has Tex goggles with her, but her theme returns as she departs for the Great Galactic Civil War. The show ends the only way it could, with one final rendition of the Bad Batch theme, bold and in the brass. But I am left with some questions. Why did the Empire never return to Pabu? Did Omega ever pursue her force powers further? What happened to Project Necromancer? What happens to the Zillow Beast? And how was this not explained? It really feels like Filoni was trying to set up that this was going to be tech and he's never shot. So, was this tech after all? It was too on the nose to be nothing but it was never explained and ended up being distracting. So what's up with this? To me, this finale didn't answer any of the great mysteries right now in Star Wars and left me feeling a little let down in that regard. But I absolutely would love to know what all of you think as well. How did this finale live up to your expectations? What questions are you left with after it? Do you think we'll see Omega in another series later on? Was that tech? Tell me in the comments below what you think and consider checking out my Patreon page using the link in the description where you can help support this channel for as little as $1 a month or download PDFs and MP3s of projects as I complete them along with other perks at higher tiers. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to learn more about the music of a galaxy far far away and as always may the be with you.